Hello and welcome. You're tuned into Buy Now, Sell Now on ET Now. I'm Shruti Sharma and with me today is Somit Sarkar. And so it is indeed a special day for all of us. We are celebrating our 15th, 15th anniversary. anniversary. Yes, certainly. And feels like the party feeling all around us as well. And throughout the day, we're going to be continuing the celebration that you will be catching live on ET Now. But the markets are also celebrating that because once again, the markets are cheering. It's a green um, move coming in for the Nifty as well as Bank Nifty Index. Though the start was quite mild, but over the period of time, we have actually built on to smart gains. As of now, if we see the Nifty is holding on to the gains of 70 points as well as Bank Nifty holding on to a strong gains of more than 200 points and even the breadth of the market is quite supportive today. If we talk about some of the other gainers, then IT is clearly cheering up the rally today. Stocks like Wipro, Infosys, LTI, Mindtriar seem to be lending support to the benchmark indices. But on the flip side, that's the auto pack from the Marty Suzuki. It's the top loser on Nifty 50 today after over the weekend we have seen Hyundai IPO news coming. Getting the nod for Sebi, as well as we are seeing a bit of a negative reaction on Marty Suzuki. Other than that, Dr. Reddy's DV's lab from the pharma space are seen to be a little under pressure, but can't complain because it's once again the housing finance companies from the likes of LIC Housing Finance, Canfin Homes, is they are indeed uh, taking it higher. Look at the move, LIC Housing up around 3%, and Canfin Homes gaining more than 7%. And that was one of the buy now, sell now lens topic as well, just the last week where we have. Have discussed all these counters with our experts but for today viewers uh, moving on to the buy now sell now lens topic for today and we're gonna be shifting focus to m m because that stock is now seen to be sitting at its all-time high levels and in the investor meet that was the first ever investor meet coming in for the company we have seen strong commentaries from the company if we talk about some of the major key takeaways by the company then indeed firstly the company did um, tell about their plans and strategic priorities for, to capitalize on their market leadership in the farm as well as auto business the management is quite confident that they have been doing pretty well on to uh, their auto business and going ahead any of the capex requirement that the company has they the all these verticals are self-sufficient to fund that. Other than that, they want to unlock the full potential in their IT as well as financial services. In an interview uh, with Mr. Anisha with ET Now, he did uh, specifically mention that the turnaround story is there in Tech Mahindra and the company is working on that. And thirdly, they want to deliver high growth in some of their new ventures as well. But one of the factors that the street was really excited about was their new offerings and the upcoming offerings in the EV space. They did showcase three new electric SUVs which they were quite well designed even the analyst community is liking them as well as they are also saying uh, that the market share is one of the key focuses for m and in the times ahead. They did come out with their CAPEX plans as well. And all in all, very strong commentary coming in for m and across the board. And even the brokerages are seen to be liking it for the like of Nomura. They have gone ahead and raised the target price on m and while maintaining their buy rating to 3,374 rupees. They're saying that they expect m and to continue delivering market beating growth across their segments, as well as when it uh, comes to some of the other brokerages, then uh, they are also sounding positive. So majorly, all these brokerages have gone ahead and raised their target price on m and But indeed, let's move on and let's also hear out from the top boss of m and itself, Dr. Anisha. Let's go across and listen in to what he has to say. All the businesses are positioned well. They've got a strong value proposition, uh, which is why customers will come to us. Uh, they've got a strong execution uh, as well. And that execution part is important. Uh, because at times we faltered in the past when we haven't executed well. Uh, so that's one thing we're pushing across all our businesses is make sure that we can execute well, that uh, we can actually deliver whatever we commit to our investors. You know, M for Mahindra, M for magic. That's what mm -hmm. I always say when I look at your numbers. Whatever you've indicated, you've mm -hmm. really managed to beat mm -hmm. the estimates quite handsomely. In your forward guidance, which some would say of a 20% EV, EPS growth and 18% ROE, some would say that that's very conservative because you're sounding optimistic, all your businesses are growing. So would you do the, would you follow what you've done in the past, beat the numbers and beat your own estimates handsomely? So Nikhil, when we set the target for 18% ROE, a large number of our analysts and investors came to us and said, 
You're crazy to say this. You're not going to get there. That was two years ago, but <laughs> that was. Now we got there in 18 months, even though we had said we'll get there in three to five years. Uh, and since then, we have been consistent in saying uh, that's actually a good target to have. It's mm -hmm. a good target to have an 18% ROE on a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we can manage 15 to 20% growth on a consistent basis, that's something an investor would absolutely love. Uh, mm -hmm. So we've got fairly tough targets. Um, we also have made them tougher because when we said this, we grew 84%, in fact, from an EPS standpoint over the last four years. And then we said, fine, let's take the first year out because that was a little lower. Um, and therefore, it raises the bar for us in terms of growth as well. But we are comfortable with that. So at this point in time, uh, we're staying with the estimates we have. But obviously, the efforts across our teams is to over-deliver over wherever we can. Well, uh, that was Anisha of the M&M Group. With that, let's also welcome in our technical guest for the day, Kush Bora, and our, and our fundamental guest, Rajesh Agarwal. Uh, Rajesh, I would come to you first. Uh, you must have gone through the M&M Investor Day. Uh, what was your key takeaway and post that any of the M&M Group stock that you consider as a value buy at this moment? Good morning, Samitra. Good morning, Ani. Uh, good morning, Kush. Uh, first of all, let me congratulate you on your 15th anniversary of ET now, I clearly remember late 2008 when the show was not on commercial terms, but it was going for just trial runs and I was doing those day, uh, shows those days with Aisha and all that. It was really wonderful to see that 15 years have gone by and I wish and, uh, many more 15 to go ahead in future. Now coming back to Mahindra and Mahindra, we have been very bullish in very long period of time. Yes, it has given phenomenal return in 2024. In fact, if I would say that uh, it was the best performing stock of 2024, I don't think I would be wrong. Uh, almost 70% return in FY24. Uh, in 2024, I would say, till date. And that's phenomenal for a company like the size of Mahindra. Because in uh, mid-cap, small-cap, you can see these kind of returns. But for our large-cap companies, 70% in just six months is great. Uh, it's trading at record high. But coming to company, we are very excited because of the plans to introduce six SUVs by 2030, almost 23 launches by 2030. And as per FY24 volumes, if you see, it's become the world's largest tractor manufacturer. Strong plans going ahead to scale up both domestic and overseas market. We think the company is on a strong footing. The outlook from the management has been very strong. And the best part is the farm equipment uh, division, which was lagging for some time, is going to perform in FY25. Uh, just because of the fact that uh, the focus of the government would be on rural infrastructure after the elections and not to forget that IMD has predicted above normal monsoon. So these two factors are going to help uh, farm equipment business. So overall, we are very bullish on this. Uh, although it has run up quite a lot, but we feel that by FY25 and that's March, uh, we can see a target of 30 to 50 on that. All right. Uh, so that's the take coming in on m, &M from Rajesh. And Rajesh, thank you so much for being a part of all throughout these 15 years. We can see a dedicated viewership of yours who just come to ask, uh, have your guidance on this show particularly, but I'm sure that you have been part for so many shows throughout these years. So thank you so much for that. But Kush, you have also been um, supportive towards our journey to turn us to Fabulous 15. Thank you so much for that. And let me just ask you on m, &M as well, though m, m as a stock is doing pretty well today. But apart from that, a lot of these other counters, m, &M Financial, Tech M, they're all seeing good gains in today's trading session. So any stock that still stands out for you at this point in time and any fresh view or buy recommendations on any of these? Sure. Uh, Shishi, uh, first up, a very uh, good morning. Hi, Rajesh. Uh, well, you know, first up, congratulations on your 15 years. You're well and truly into your teens. So, you know, the rebellious nature of a teen and the maturity of, uh, you know, a veteran. So I think, you know, you, you've got all of it covered and it's a genuine pleasure uh, that I started my, uh, you know, journey in the, you know, in the realm of media, you know, markets I've been around for a while, but, you know, in the realm of media, uh, you know, with your network. So it's been a genuine pleasure, uh, you know, to be a part of this journey. Well, uh, you know, as far as the m, &M group goes, 
um, there, there's no two ways or there's no doubt that you know the the leader of the pack you know will uh, continue to outshine which is the M&M stock itself uh, now in the near term the stock actually over and we are seeing some negative divergences so from a near term perspective i would be inclined to buy this on dips perhaps close to a 2750 2800 kind of a level but if you've got this from a medium to or rather a medium to long term perspective i i don't think you have to worry about you know these uh, dips or this volatility at all now we've discussed you know you mentioned a few other names take mahindra uh, you know perhaps mahindra finance mahindra logistics some of these names are showing some traction but there's fair degree of volatility and a range bound movement so we might perhaps want to hold up before we get a very clear direction on some of uh, you know some of these names before we start uh, uh, you know parking any more capital to it so as far as the group goes my pick will remain mahindra and mahindra uh, any fresh capital deployment should be done on dips uh and as for the rest of the pack i think i'll wait and watch and have some more clarity before uh you know uh, parking any more uh, money you know in the in the other group names uh well thank you kosh and rajesh for your views on uh, mnm and with that let's slip into a short break and post that we'll start addressing the viewer queries show where we get you answers for all your stock related queries and viewers you can also connect with us live on a whatsapp number that will be flashing on the top of the screen and you can also write to us on our social media handles of et now that is x as well as facebook pages and we'll try to take as many queries as possible and to guide you today we are being joined by kush bora on the technical side and fundamentally rajesh agrawal will guide us so let's get started we have so many queries already started pouring in and the first query that i have uh is coming in from bhardwaj from coimbatore and rajesh he wants an advice on sula vinyards uh he wants to know can he go ahead and buy this counter with the next 3 to 5 years investment horizon and if not then any stock from the similar space you can help him with see sula vinyards is a very good company i would say it has not been performing quite late from the last 6 months or so it has been underperforming the market but the numbers have been good but you know niche business of uh, wine making and not to forget the wine tourism division which they have both have been doing very well valuations are attractive if you are a long term uh, investor can go ahead and buy sula wine yards for a time horizon of maybe 12 to 18 months but if you're looking for a short term swing trade or something of that sort then you can uh, in the same sector i would say macdonald would be a better choice queries from satya and it's on a stock called avental which is a defense uh, manufacturing company now he's saying that he had bought the stock at 115 rupees and currently the price, share prices are trading around 180 so he wants to know what's the fundamental view on the stock for the next 1 to 2 years rajesh uh, have you tracked this counter avental see i think one should try to book and profits at these uh, this counter uh, because as uh, the gentleman and himself has said that it has run up quite a lot and sitting on a good amount of profit instead one can if one wants to be in defense sector now is the time to switch from second run companies to uh, better companies for example bel or a bml even coaching ship are giving you a better bets in the defense space so book out from the avental and switch to those companies and uh, coach what would be your technical view on this stock so i agree with uh, rajesh sir the fact that you know the stocks actually seen uh, you know more than what a 50% uh, jump in the last four to five sessions uh, although it's on back of very good volumes it does put it uh, you know in a bit of a overstretched uh, territory so if you've got an existing position uh, perhaps you might want to book out partially if not fully hold the rest with a stop loss of 172 uh, the momentum could take the stock higher but not a bad idea to take some money off the table and hold the rest Uh, the next query that i have is coming from venkati and he wants to invest in some housing finance stock for a period of one year uh if you can suggest him one of the one of your top bets from the housing finance stock as well as your take on nesco as well uh, do you like the stock at this point in time and if not then any entry level that you can help him with kush is it for me yeah no kush this query is for you sure uh so let's start with uh, nesco well you know the overall view here is bullish the stock's actually uh, done rather well for itself uh, not a bad idea to take some money off the table now because it's seeing some sort of profit booking and you know we are seeing some we were seeing uh, some negative divergences and you know those are playing out uh so you know perhaps partial uh, profit booking is not a bad idea you can hold the rest of the quantity with a stop loss of 935 that's where a good support zone comes in now as far as housing finance company goes and as a disclaimer you know we gave a call on pnb housing finance just last week 
and even the target two has been hit. So we remain bullish on a PNB housing finance. We believe that you know 925 to 950 is you know a very reasonable medium term target on this. So if someone wants to consider a fresh, you know that's a good candidate. 850 is where I would place my stop loss now. The next uh, query is from Soma Shekhar from Hyderabad and it's on PTC Industries. Again, again a defense company. Now, he has 10 shares of PTC Industries bought at a price of 12,000. Current share prices are around 14,000 rupees for the stock. He wants to know whether can he hold this counter for long term or move to Bharat Electronics. Uh, Rajesh, what would be your view here? PTC Industries or Bharat Electronics for long term? Company, I would say continue holding to this. Although just now I have recommended Bath Electronics and others, but PTC also is a very strong company. And for a time horizon of 12 to 18 months, uh, I would suggest buying on dips kind of strategy by for any reasons, maybe market condition or whatever it comes down to 12,500 to 13,000 odd levels. It would be a good buy at those levels. So it's a hold. Rajesh, uh, one more query uh, your way. This one is coming from Edwin and he wants your advice on Paris Defence, one of the other uh, name uh, from the Defence Pact. He wants your view that at this price point, do you still like Paris Defence for a fresh buy and would you advise for the same? Well, I would say wait for some more, uh, one more, one or two quarter results. Order book has been good. The company has been doing very well. The last two, three quarter numbers have been good, but I think all the positives have already been discounted in the price. Yes, of course, it, if it falls to around 1200 odd levels, at the, those levels I can suggest a buy. But at this point of time, anybody holding can continue to hold. But for a new buy, one needs to wait for a correction of at least 10% from the current market price. The next query is from Yuvraj from Chennai. He's holding 200 shares of Tata Motors. And he's sitting on a profit of 10%. Kush, what would be your view here? Should he continue to hold this counter or a shift to MNM, in fact? Well, you know, if the view is you know anywhere from short to medium term, then perhaps it's a good idea to book some profit out uh, purely because you know the stock is lacking momentum. If you see it's gone a bit flat around uh, you know the thousand level, hovering around that level for some time, even in the past, you know, it's done that. So if you have a 10% profit, then it's a good idea to take uh, that money off the table. MNM, uh, well, you know, you could switch, but you know, as we discussed, you know, uh, at the start of the show, it's run up quite a bit. We're seeing negative divergences, so perhaps at the dip of uh, you know 2750, 2800, close to those levels, would be a good entry point. And this is a one stock that you know gives you a rather good momentum as well. So book profit from Tata Motors and Mahindra and Mahindra wait for a dip to uh, you know uh, enter a fresh. All right, uh, Rajesh, the next query that I have is uh, from S. Uh, Kana Biran, who is a senior citizen writing to us from Bangalore, wants to have a fundamental view on Arvin Fashions. He is holding more than 30 shares. His buy price is 520 rupees. Uh, so he's at a mild loss in this one. But at this point, what's the fundamental view? Can he go ahead and add more of this particular counter or book out and look for better opportunities? See, better opportunities. Definitely there are better opportunities, but then I won't say booking losses at this point of time. Putting new money is out of question because the numbers have been not that very good. One can continue to hold. Uh, maybe on uh, a rise, one can try to exit maybe around 500 odd levels. Uh, it would be a sell. Well, the next query is from Kaushik Mitra from Mumbai and he wants to know whether, whether it is a good idea to add SOM distillers on a fundamental basis based uh, post uh, today's drop that we have seen in the share prices. Rajesh, have you tracked this counter SOM distilleries? See, I uh, don't think it's a good idea to buy this counter even uh, given the fact that it is dropped by around 8%. If you look at the fundamentals, the kind of run-up which this stock has seen in the last one year or so has been phenomenal. And I don't think the fundamentals justify this kind of run-up. So I think there might be more correction coming in. So better to uh, invest in, uh, if somebody wants to invest in this sector, we have discussed Sula Wine Yards or a McDowell. That would be a better bet than some. All right. Uh, the next query that I have uh, is coming in uh, from Subramaniam from Chennai. And um, uh, Kush, he wants your view on Federal Bank. Can he go ahead and buy this counter for a short-term gain? Uh, he wants the near-term targets. Uh, and how is the technical setup looking like for this counter? The technical setup is extremely, uh, you know, encouraging here, and you know we are bullish on the uh, banking space, even the uh, PSU bank space. Uh, so Federal Bank, you know, we are seeing, you know, a good bit of gain uh, coming in. Although the volumes in the last couple of sessions have thinned, but you know that's really not too big a concern just yet. 
because uh, you know after a big spike you know you might see some uh, cooling off on the whole uh, the momentum is just starting to pick up from a near term i think 182 and 188 are uh, you know the targets to look at 170 or maybe just under that is a good level to keep your stop loss at also you might want to look at a, a union bank you know while you are at it this stock is flattened out you know after a big spike you know there was a, you know there was a, a big action that you know we'd seen around it but i think from a medium term perspective a union bank is also starting to look attractive where it's forming a base so from a momentum perspective you could look at a federal bank from a medium term perspective perhaps a union bank also you know uh, perhaps you can keep it on your radar queries from sunita from hyderabad now uh, she is holding around 100 shares of inox when bought at a price of 158 currently she is sitting on a loss uh, rajesh would you uh, advise her to book loss on this counter or continue to hold this counter uh and what what's uh, your view when it comes to the future growth plans of inox went to book out from the, this maybe 10 15 rupees loss is better to um, uh, get out if uh, you can save your money i think one should get out of this counter because i think the fundamentals has already been discounted the fair price according to us is around 120 odd rupees so there is a chances that around 15 20% more correction can come into this So it's better to get out of this. Maybe switch to a better counter. There are a lot of mid cap, mid cap names uh, which have good potential, even after these kind of. All right, that's the day coming in on Inox Win. But with this view, it's time to slip into a very short break. Don't query where we'll be right back to take more of your stock related queries. Back, you're watching Buy Now Sell Now with me, uh, Somit Sarkar, and my co-anchor Shristi. Uh, the next query is. Uh, from lakshmi from hyderabad and she wants to know which is the best sugar stock to buy uh, for a period of 9 to 12 months and she also wants to know what's the long term view when it comes to zagal uh, prepaid rajesh uh, any views on the sugar companies and zagal prepaid see sugar i would say uh, it's a good play going forward to when there have been talks of uh, msp being high from almost 30 31 rupees to almost 41 rupees that's a great hike if it materializes of course uh, there are no concrete uh, news as such but otherwise too the sector has been doing good and i think uh, it has not performed for the last so many months because of various reasons and all the negatives has already been discounted way forward going up and the best stock to pick up from this sector i would say there are two stocks which are our favorites one is balrampur chini of course with the large capacity it has Uh, numbers being very good government's focus on ethanol and all the company is going to do well and they have plans for uh, around uh, uh, they have a capex of around 2000 2500 odd crores the next 3 years which is being put into something called uh, refurb uh, renewable plastics i would say so biodegradable plastic in of course so uh, from sugar they are going to uh, buy degradable plastic that would be the only player in india and if that materialize that would be a big trigger but that aside to the company is in a strong footing one can go ahead and the other one is ed perry where you have 40300 tcd capacity of sugar 400 uh, plus distillery 150 plus uh, cogen power uh, they have uh, they have been doing well they are going for capacity expansion in distillery And the entire market cap is around eleven thousand crore. And the best part it is hold fifty six percent in Cora Mandal that again has a value of twenty two thousand odd crore. So in eleven thousand odd crore you are getting twenty two thousand worth of uh, Cora Mandal and the sugar factory of course. So these two are a strong bets in this sector. Rambochini as well as the ID Perry uh, top bets from the sugar space, but. Um, Kush, the next query that I have is from from the pharma space, and um, a viewer named um, Lena from Mumbai wants to take on Biocon. Uh, she is holding 400 shares of Biocon, but her price is at around 300 rupees where she entered. Uh, wants a short-term technical view on this particular counter. For today, there is a negative news flow of US FDA issuing three observations to one of their facilities. That's why the stock is down, but good to hold on. And can she go ahead and uh, add more after three fifty is taken out? Well, to answer the second question first, which is you know one, do you add more once three fifty is taken out? Perhaps because you know that's when the momentum will return to the stock, and you know you could see some fresh uh, round of you know upside uh, coming in. 
so that for the second query as for the first one bought at 300 currently at 328 what do you do my suggestion is to you know exit uh, the reason being that you know this stock has uh, its bouts you know there are there are times when the stock moves up but then also remember that it fizzles out fairly fast now after hitting that high of about 350 odd the stock's already down uh, you know about 20 odd rupees so i think from here on it's not a bad idea to take some money off the table uh, we, you know the second query was actually quite apt that you know do you consider buying when you know the recent highs are taken out and there is press momentum yes perhaps that's a good time not a good idea to buy you know this stock at declines you never know where the uh, you know where the bottom uh, for this stock will come in Next query is from Sandeep from Noida and he wants to know the long term outlook when it comes to Prince Pipes. He is holding around 100 shares, bought at a price of 650. Rajesh, should he continue to hold this counter or exit? Continue to hold. The company has been doing well. The uh, sector is in good demand. Uh, the kind of growth we are witnessing into reality and infrastructure is going to boost the demand again. So maybe 750 would be a better target to uh, think of uh, booking profits, but at this point of time, it's a hold. For by any chance it falls to uh, corrects by around 10%, it would be a good buy too. Rajesh, uh, the next query is from Sumedha from Mumbai. Wants a view on two counters. Firstly, is uh, City Union Bank, where she bought the shares at a price of 140 rupees, currently at some profits right now. And the other one is I'm not sure whether I track this one or not. Uh, the stock name is Orient Ceratech. That's a small cap company, is what I can see. And her buy. I think it's a good uh, hold at the. Price is 52 rupees. Any take in both of these names? Which I think. I, I guess that we have, we have snapped that line with Rajesh. We'll try to fix that once again. Uh, Rajesh is back with us. So Rajesh wanted your view on two of these names, Orient Ceratech as well as City Union Bank. See, Orient Ceramics, as I said, uh, is a good buy at, at around 45 odd levels, 45, 50 odd levels. At this point of time, it's a old. The entire ceramic pack is going to do well because of the fact that real, reality as a pack is doing very well. And these ancillary companies, be it ceramic tiles, paints, pipes, are going to do well. And not to forget with the kind of gas price going down, these kind of ceramic companies are going to do well. And the second one is City Union Bank that has been underperforming from quite a long period of time. Despite the fact that bank is a very uh, has a very strong balance sheet with a very conservative kind of management. So the asset quality is very good. So I think one can have a target of 180, 185 odd levels and any dip should be considered as an opportunity to buy. Where he's from Srinath from Chennai and he wants to buy either of these two stocks that is Adani Energy Solutions or Titagar Rail Systems at current prices. Kush, uh, what would be your short term targets for both these counters, Adani Energy and uh, Titagar Rail? Well, I think Adani uh, energy is actually quite uh, flat and, you know, has been for a while except for those, uh, you know, highly uh, volatile spikes that it had given. Uh, that said, for the near term, I think, you know, the key averages here uh, converge around 155, 160 kind of zone. So that will be the first target. Once that is taken out, you know, you're looking at a 185 as well. Support uh, for this one comes in at 990. But as I said, this is fairly flat. Uh, you know, there aren't any indications of a you know big momentum uh, pickup here. As far as, you know, Titagar uh, goes, you know, exactly the opposite. You know, you, you've seen a fair degree of momentum on this one. Now approaching this high of, uh, you know, about 1600, you know, or close that it had come to. Here, the first target will remain, uh, you know, close to those uh, 1570 mark. Once that is taken out, perhaps the 1625 as well will also come into play. And on the downside, you have 1450 as a good support zone. So that should act as your stop loss in case, you know, someone's taking a fresh position. Alright, moving on. The next query, Rajesh, is uh, from uh, Srinivas. He is holding 90 shares of TVS Holdings. He bought these shares at a price of 5100 rupees. He's a long-term investor and wants your take. What to do now? The stock is more than doubled for him. Uh, your take, continue to hold on or look out for some other stocks now? It has a long way to go. It's still trading at a discount to its intrinsic value of the holding. Uh, because of holding company discount, which has been given. But otherwise, if you see the kind of stock it holds, they have been doing very well and we are very bullish in the entire group. So continue to hold. Uh, these kind of companies have low volume and low volatility, but for a longer term horizon, they give very good returns. Where is from Chandra Shekran from Chennai and he's holding Sona Comstar's 500 shares bought at a price of 590 
he can continue to hold this counter for the next 6 months. Uh, Kush, should he uh, book losses and exit or continue to hold this counter? Well, you know, not a bad idea to exit partially, uh, you know, book some losses here. The stock is trying desperately to take the support at its, you know, near term average of 640. So, uh, you know, perhaps there will be an attempt, but, you know, I do not see a very big upside on this one coming around. So, perhaps you could book partially and invest in the likes of, you know, uh, Lumax Auto. That is one stock that, you know, we have been fairly bullish on uh, for a while now. So, switch uh, partially to uh, Lumax Auto. If the stop loss is indeed triggered, you know, which comes in at, you know, let's say the medium term average of 625, then exit completely. And then you might want to shift the entire uh, capital, uh, you know, to Lumax Auto. A fair degree of, uh, you know, upswing here, but I think, uh, you know, a fair degree of upswing left as well. So, 575 is the target that we're looking at for Lumax Auto. Uh, you could switch to, uh, you know, a Lumax Auto tech partially, or maybe just, you know, if you want to switch in one round also, that's not a bad idea. Once again, a query for you. Namita is holding 100 shares of Javelin Farmova from a price of 540 rupees. She is at a profit right now, but can she expect 850 soon or move out and book out some profits right here? That's for me, right? Yes, Kush, this is for you. Yeah, yeah, no, it'll be a good idea to uh, you know book out profits here. The stock's actually facing this resistance of 770 uh, for a while now, not being able to take out the momentum seems to be flattening out. And, you know, the most important factor, which is the volumes here, they've been thinning over the last, you know, 8 to 10 sessions. So, perhaps in the near term, you know, the run, uh, you know, is already there. Uh, she might have to wait a little longer to see that 850 mark. So, not a bad idea to take uh, money off the table, uh, you know, book some profits. Perhaps, you know, you could reconsider, uh, you know, an entry around those 700 or 725 mark. Okay. Uh, the next query is from V. Morley from Bangalore and uh, he has bought uh, 200 shares of Symphony at a price of 1,686 and he also has 77 shares of Bharat Rasayan uh, bought at a price of uh, 12,300. He is incurring losses on both the counters. Uh, Rajesh, he wants to know whether should he continue to hold both these counters or exit and consider buying uh, say ONGC or BPCL? BPCL would be a good bet at this point of time considering the fact of the KPX they have announced and the numbers they have announced. Even after the kind of run up to around 600 odd levels, the stock is still trading at a discount to its intrinsic value. So, BPCL would be a good buy, no doubt. And as far as Bharat Rasayan is concerned, I think one should try to book losses because uh, I don't think uh, in the recent uh, near future it's going to uh, do something, maybe maximum it can go to 12,000, 12,200 odd rupees. So, the, it will be better to uh, book out some losses and get out of this. And the third one was? Uh, the other one was he is holding Symphony and Bharat Rasayan. He wanted to know whether he should exit these counters and buy, considering buying ONGC or BPCL. Rajesh. Uh, Rajesh, you are on mute, I guess. All right, we'll try to take Rajesh's view back again. But with this, it's time to slip into a very short break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the show and just taking a quick look at the markets then because Nifty Bank is trading at the day's highest point right now. Almost a 300 points gain is what we are seeing on that particular index while Nifty is also holding on to the gains of almost 70 points. But let's get back to all your stock related queries then. And the next query that I have is for you Rajesh. Uh, this query is from Ron and he wants uh, uh, two, uh, two counters for a long term investment. One could be from the PSU pack, uh, uh, some stock or some company that is into the construction space. And the other one is PSU stock from the gas space. So, any, uh, any of the recommendations for, from these two sectors particularly? Sorry, guys, right? Sorry, Rajesh didn't get you. Hello? Yes, Rajesh, we can hear you. This one is for yeah. you. Yeah, right. Uh, see, from the gas space, I would say uh, Gas Authority of India Limited is trading at a huge discount. I think that can stock can get phenomenal return if somebody owes for a long period of time. So, it's the valuations are very good. 
at uh, 220, 250 not lower levels. This is a very good level to enter for maybe a 15% kind of CAGR return in the next two years or so. so that would be a first pick from a gas space. And as far as construction space uh, in the PSU pack is uh, considered uh, said, I think there are very few options with the likes of NBCC and all. But still, the valuations are quite stretched at uh, those levels. So I would say uh, anything uh, to buy from those pieces at this point of time. Well, the next query is from uh, Swami from Dubai. He has around 1,000 stocks of Exicom Telesystems, bought at a price of 316 per share. Currently, he's sitting on a profit. Uh, Kush, what would be your short-term view on this counter? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name. Exicom Telesystems. Sure. Uh, well, I think you know, from a near-term perspective, the setup looks good. There's very limited data on this one, so I can't give a very medium-term kind of a perspective. But from a near-term perspective, the stock's making uh, you know higher lows formation. I think uh, it's a very reasonable uh, target to uh, you know achieve, which is about 340, 345. I think once that is taken out, perhaps 360 will also come into play. And you know a support zone is at 315. So if you have an existing position, uh, keep that as your top loss. All right, uh, Rajesh, the next query is from Prathmesh from Mumbai and he uh, wants your suggestion in any of the um, stocks from the logistics space that you like for a long-term investment right now. Rajesh, this query is for you. I guess you are on mute, Rajesh. No, I'm not. It's okay. Yes. Concord is the best bet. Uh, in the logistics space, I would say one of the best PSU plays. The numbers have been good. Valuations are very good, I would say, with the uh, railway LL being almost solved. So I think that would be a big, big upside from here. So go for Concord. All right, so Concord is the best bet when it comes to the logistics space. But with this, viewers, let's kick start taking all your queries in the rapid fire session. And the first query that I have um, is coming in from Anushka from Karnataka. Uh, Kush, she wants to know can she buy Petronet LNG at current market price? Well, uh, at the current market price, yes, she can. A stop loss here comes in at 312, targets are 325 and 333. This query is from Balakrishna from Chennai. He wants to know whether should he buy MTAR Tech and Karnataka Bank at current prices. Rajesh, what would be your view here? Rajesh, we can't hear you. Both are a buy from Vijayan from Horizon. All right. Uh, Kush, the next query is coming in from Poonam. Uh, wants an advisor on Aisha Motors holding 10 shares. Buy price is 3,000 rupees. Wants a short term view on this one. Continue to hold. Uh, a stop loss here comes in at 4700 positionally, and on the upside, you're looking at a 5100 and a 5250 as well. Uh, this query is from Kanti Bhai Dauda from Pune. He's holding 450 shares of IEX, bought at an average price of 199 rupees. Should he continue to hold this counter or sell? Kush, what would be your view here? Continue to hold. Stop loss at 178. All right, Rajesh, the next query is from Viji, holding uh, 4,500 shares of Subex from a price of 41 rupees. I'm not sure whether you track this one, but any outlook on this particular stock? Sell, uh, book losses. The next query is from Sudha. She currently owns Industars and Zentech. Uh, on an average, uh, she's sitting on a profit, but she wants to know whether should she uh, sell this counter and buy JK Paper, she Renuka Sugar and Crompton Consumer. Rajesh, would you advise her to buy these three stocks? Continue uh, with industry hours, sell the other one, buy West Coast paper instead of JK paper. All right, Kush, your advice on Hindustan Copper, uh, where Fabiola is holding 245 shares, buy price 378 rupees. Would you advise to go move to move ahead and average out this particular stock? No, don't average out, but uh, keep a stop loss at 320. The stock's gone flat now for a while. The next query is from Padmasiva Rao from Bangalore. He wants to know the near-term target when it comes to Canfin Homes. He is holding 20 shares bought at a price of 775. Kush, what would be your near-term target when it comes to Canfin Homes? Canfin Home, I think 310 and 340, uh, sorry, uh, 910 and 940 are the levels uh, to look at. But you know, it may not be a one-way ride. It's already been a vertical run. 
All right, that's the take on Canfin Homes. But for this, it's time's up in this edition of Rapid Fire Session as well as on the Buy Now, Sell Now show. Thank you so much, Kushan Rajesh, for joining us today and helping all our viewers resolve their stock-related queries. But with this, viewers, it's time to say goodbye from me and Somit and the entire team who put the show together. I could see that so many of our viewers were congratulating us on our 15th anniversary. But this celebration continues, viewers, on ET now. We are taking your leave, but Marcus and Noon will take the action ahead. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.